Previously on the Aruba Switching Story, we've learned about the Edge Services platform and how Aruba Switching fits into the unified infrastructure portion of ESP. We've had a workflow where we've needed to securely onboard a camera and have it access the data center. First, we had to provision the data center using the Aruba Fabric Composer. We then learned about data center bridging and how it applies and benefits Aruba data center switches. After our data center was provisioned, we needed to bring up the campus infrastructure so that we can start plugging in our devices. So we learned about infrastructure deployment in the campus and different ways of provisioning switches. Once we were able to bring up the campus, campus infrastructure, we were then ready to plug in devices. So to securely onboard these devices, especially with our security camera, we had to be able to securely authenticate that device. So we use dynamic segmentation with the power of user roles as well as the ability to segment traffic using either user-based tunneling or virtual network-based tunneling. We then explored power over Ethernet, especially with the advanced capabilities in AOS CX of always on PoE and quick PoE. Moving on, we then learned about virtual switching framework and the access layer and how it can benefit our switches at the edge. We then explored AOS CX resiliency and high availability using virtual switching extension or VSX. We saw what happens when a link failure occurs, a node failure, or a live upgrade. Then we learned how to troubleshoot using the network analytics engine. In this episode, we'll hear from Alvin Castro, an automation technical marketing engineer, as well as from our old friend Ruben Iglesias, who will talk about automation, the automation capabilities in Aruba CX switching. Hey everyone, I'm Alvin Castro, and I'm here to talk about the Aruba CX automation and API capabilities. As discussed previously, Aruba Edge Services Platform provides a map to understand the evolution of the Aruba Edge technologies and products. One thing to note is that across the layers, each of Aruba's hardware and software has an API interface to allow for better programmability and automation to allow for both internal and external integrations. This enables us to create automation tools and frameworks that help our customers' daily operations make easier to conduct and at greater scales than ever before. Great. Uh, can you explain what operations we usually perform? Sure. Oftentimes, these operations are split into three distinct categories. The first is day zero, which is the design and planning phase. This involves designing the network and planning out the automation and configurations for that particular environment. Uh, next is day one, where the actual deployment use cases take place. This involves onboarding devices, deploying the correct configurations, and that even can be dynamically created through automation. Lastly, I have here day two, but really it could be day three, day 100, almost like day N. This is the continuous operations category. This is the ongoing maintenance and monitoring of the network, as well as the utilization of event-driven automation to help add reactive capabilities to occurrences and anomalies that are detected in that network. Across these categories, there are multiple use cases that can, that can be seen as automation workflows. Some of the most common automation workflows include continuous integration and continuous deployment, known as CICD integrations, or connectivity to automation tools such as NetBox and InfoBox, uh, zero touch provisioning, configuration changes and backups, upgrades, analytics, fault remediation, and more. With the programmability built into our Aruba products, we're able to make you know, homegrown tools and applications such as the Aruba Fabric Composer, NetEdit, and Central that you've seen earlier. This really is to help with these automation workflows. Additionally, because our products have open APIs, this allows for our devices and switches and applications to easily integrate with our customers' existing automation tools and frameworks. OK, yes. Automation sounds very useful. Um, how can we automate with AOS CX switching? I'm glad you brought that up because Aruba's AOS CX operating systems, which are across a whole of the switches, it really makes automation easy. Each of our AOS CX switches has an open REST API that is easily accessible. This allows for any of the statistics and configurations to be retrievable, and most of them can be changeable, allowing for external integrations to make use of this REST API to interface directly with the switch. These APIs are auto-generated, so 
as new features are enabled through upgrades, the API automatically has the corresponding REST methods to allow for the configuration of that capability. Aruba CX switches also have the WebSocket functionality. This allows for the ability to subscribe to all events happening in the system. This allows for external tools and integrations to be notified and updated when there are changes in that particular switch's database. This makes it really easy for these tools to receive these statistics in an easily consumable JSON format. Of course, we discussed earlier about the built-in network analytics engine allowing for historical analytics to be tracked on the switch directly. This gives event-driven automation capabilities and intelligence in a distributed format. As mentioned earlier, this operating system has programmability built in and has the capabilities across data center, campus, and edge. Can you give us a short oh. demo on the REST API? Sure. Let me show you just how easy it is to use the REST API on this Aruba CX switch. Here we can see the web UI of the Aruba CX switch. In the top right corner, you see this gear icon, which will take us to the AOS CX REST API browser. I'm gonna click V1004 right here. And it opens up a new tab. This, can, this took a little bit primarily because it dynamically built the list of the REST APIs for this particular platform and firmware. So this RESTful interface allows you to interface directly with the CX switch using the APIs available. We can see that there's different configuration aspects, um, including BGP, COP, DHCP, basically any of the type of configurations and statistics that you would see on the CLI, you could actually gather that information similar through this REST API. For example, I'm gonna click this interface section. We can see over here that we have several different methods to actually interact with this REST URI. By clicking on this, and we can see a the way to get all the interfaces. Uh, there's several different attributes and capabilities. And down here, we have example responses, as well as expected behavior to know whether or not this information is, is good or bad, uh, basically request methods that you send. So I'm gonna click try it out here and keep things default. And we can see that this is to get all the interfaces on the device. By clicking Execute, I can now get the response of all these interfaces available on this switch in this JSON format. So this gives you know, a high level list of all of these interfaces, both physical as well as logical. And next, let me show you how to get information for one particular interface. This gives you a lot more details. And by clicking some of these links over here, you can actually see some of the references and information for each of those values that you get. I'm gonna do a quick one to grab interface 113. And I'm gonna use one of these filters over here to select only the writable information on that. So this makes it extremely useful to specify what you wanna see. Like if I wanted to see the statistics for this particular interface, I could click on this, but for writable, this gives me the information that is capable to change, um, which I'll be doing for one of the next methods. So we can see all of these different information statistics for this particular interface over here. I'm gonna grab this really fast with a quick copy. You could actually click this to, to copy all that. Next, I'm gonna go to the put. So put is to update or change this information. So next I'm gonna click try it out again, go to that same interface, 113. There's an example body that's given when you do like the puts in the post. I'm actually gonna overwrite that with what I just copied. And for this, let's give it a description. Let's call this my interface three. Click execute. We do get this curl response body. So curl allows it to, if you're interested in utilizing curl instead of this REST API, you can actually make use of this example over here. But really what matters is that we got a response code of 200 that let us know that that was okay, that was a success. And if I were to actually go to that web UI again, I can click on the interfaces and now see that 113 has that description. 
So this, there are several ways to interact with the CX switch using this RESTful API. And this really gives you kind of like a built-in documentation to make use of this API REST URIs for your own external automation as well. By using these REST APIs as a primary interface, it enables us to create several different automation workflows and integrations already, already ready for our users and our customers to make use in their own environments. So we've created Ansible modules and collections that make use of uh, the configurations for ACLs, L2 and L3 interfaces, VLANs, and more. This makes it easier for people that have in existing Ansible integrations in their network to really make use of these playbooks. Additionally, we have a Python SDK that creates a wrapper around these APIs. That way you can easily make Python calls that can change functionalities for ACLs, interfaces, lags, and more. We also have example workflows that could really make it easy to establish you know, a full data center eVPN VXLAN deployment. One other such integration and tool that we have is Napalm. This allows for a unified abstraction layer to gather information across multi-vendor environments. So this makes it easy to run these functions such as get interfaces across not only the CX switches, but you know several multi-vendor switches that also have that Napalm functionality. This is also really useful for some of those integrations such as NetBox and ENMS that really allows for that high level view across multi-vendor networks. And we've also created a StackStorm pack. This allows for external integrations to have their own type of event-driven automation. Can you take a few minutes and go deeper into uh, how we use Ansible? Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, Ansible is used in several different data center as well as highly scalable environments. It's um, a, a Red Hat product that really allows for provisioning, configuration management, and application deployment you know, at scale for not only networking, but also for uh, servers and switches and, and storage and more. Uh, Ansible works really well with Aruba. In fact, we are official partners and we've helped establish that through our Aruba Ansible collections. And so that makes it simple, flexible, and powerful to really utilize Ansible in these highly scalable environments with Aruba CX switches. So we have several different collections and playbooks that could really make it easy to deploy networks across the board um, through data centers, through edge, as well as make use of several of the different, several of the different um, libraries and collections that we have. In fact, we've got modules that all make use of that built-in REST API. And the newest version of our Ansible collections make use of the Python SDK. That way we have that uniform, um, that uniform automation that uses the same REST API on that CX backend. Not only can we make those configurations via Ansible or Python, but the Ansible, Ansible collection also has the SSH modules available to make CLI commands and configurations to really give you that customizability for your network. Great. So I see that we have many automation tools. So how can I get started with automation? Where can I find more details and, um, and tools? Great question, Ruben. Well, we actually have the Aruba Developer Hub. This right here is where you can get started with all type of Aruba CX automation, as well as automation across all of the Aruba products, uh, such as Central. Here, we have this AOS CX section, and we can see that we've got areas for API information, network analytics engine, Python, Ansible, and more. So by clicking on, on any of these sections, it actually would take us to comprehensive guides and information about utilizing our frameworks, our automation tools that we've created, such as this PyOS CX SDK. There are examples, there are even videos to help you get started that we've uploaded on our airheads. One other great thing about the, the develop, uh, sorry, one other great thing about the Aruba Developer Hub is that it has a built-in API reference that is similar to what I showed you with that REST, RESTful interface browser. So even if you don't have a CX switch in front of you, you can actually browse through 
this Aruba Developer Hub for CX to really make use of and, and see some examples of how to utilize that built-in REST API. As we create more, as we create more automation integrations, definitely keep a lookout on this Aruba Developer Hub. We'll have more and more information to come. Thank you, Alvin and Ruben, for talking about automation and the benefits it has with Aruba CX switching. So we've, throughout this video series, we've talked about all these pieces and we want to put them all together. So we have this, we had this workflow where we needed to connect a security camera and have it access a facial recognition application in the data center. We had a provision in the data center with Aruba Fabric Composer. We had to build the campus using the various provisioning methods that we have. We needed to apply dynamic segmentation so we can securely onboard devices and users as well as segment them. We learned about the high availability and resiliency of some of the features of AOS CX, stacking capabilities with VSF, high availability capabilities with VSX. We've learned about how to troubleshoot with a network analytics engine. What makes this all, all possible is the suite of hardware that we have in the Aruba CX switching portfolio. Starting here with the CX6100 switch series, that acts as a layer two switch uh, in either a branch access or a campus access scenario. Moving up the product line, we can move up to the 6200, with a, which is a light layer three switch that you'll find in the campus access layer. It also supports VSF stacking up to eight members in a stack. Next, we have the 6300 F and M, the F standing, standing for fixed, which means those models have a fixed fan tray and a fixed power supply. It's not field replaceable. The M series having field replaceable power supplies and field, field replaceable fan trays. The 6300 can be stacked together between different models F and M up to 10 members in a stack. Same with 6200, but you cannot mix 6200 and 6300s in a stack. They have to be the same switch platform. So either 6200s can be stacked or 6300s can be stacked. The 6400 is our chassis based access switch. That can also function as an aggregation or a core in the campus. It runs on the same ASIC as the 6300, as well as has the same software code. So it has the same software features. Next, we have the 8320 or, and 8300 switch series. These functions function as campus core and aggregation switches. The 83, all the 8300s as well as the 8400 all support VSX, virtual switching extension. The 6400 also supports virtual switching extension. The reason is, is these switches will be found a lot as core and aggregation switches. And in those layers of the network, you must have resiliency, especially when doing a software upgrade, you can't have any downtime. So we have those switches tailored to have VSX capabilities. Whereas the stacks will be found at the access layer. And so we have VSF at both the 6200 and 6300 access switches. The 8325 is a core and ag switch, uh, also can be used as a data center spine and leaf or core on top of rack. That supports VXLAN as well as the 8360. Uh, same applications in either the campus or the data center. And the 8400 is our chassis base and can function as a campus core or a data center core or SPI. So all these switches as part of the Aruba switching portfolio and the feature set that comes with these switches make up this story and scenario that we've explained throughout this video series as well as provides a lot of applications for real world use cases as we've shown throughout these episodes. On behalf of the Aruba Switching Technical Marketing Engineering team, I just wanna give a heartfelt thank you for watching these videos and these episodes. I hope these videos have been beneficial to you and that you've learned more about the Aruba Switching product line and some of the amazing features that we have to help with any of your network deployment. For any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comments box. Thank you so much.